everyone, Miss Meek here, and today we are going to talk about a stem and leaf plot. Yes, this is a real thing. It sounds like some type of made up, imaginary type of math, but it actually is a very real thing. It's called a stem and leaf plot. Uh, this is what one looks like. Uh, so let's kind of label it a little bit. Over here you have the stems. And over here you have what are considered the leaves. Um, and the way that this works is that you are given a key. You cannot have a stem and leaf plot without a key. The key tells you how to read the plot. So what this is telling us is that this 1 and this 5 together make 15. So what that tells us is that our stems are going to be worth 10s. So these are going to be tens, and our leaves over here are the ones place. So a one, one ten plus a five gives you that fifteen. So that tells you how to read the stem and leaf plot. Sometimes the key uh, will tell you something different. Maybe the key instead of saying that um, this was one 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 five is fifteen, maybe the key said that one five is actually going to be. 105. Again, the leaves would still be ones, okay, but then that changes what the, um, what the stems are. The stems would then be hundreds, okay? Um, so again, it changes based on your key. The key could also say something like maybe this doesn't equal that, maybe it equals 1.5. If that's the case, then this over here becomes your ones, and these guys over here become your decimal tenths place. So again, the key changes. If the key changes, um, it's telling you how to read these numbers. So let's go ahead and make a stem and leaf plot. To make a stem and leaf plot, you need a T chart. So nothing crazy or fancy, but you need a T-chart, and you need to look at your data. Now, I personally like to kind of organize my data a little bit um, because it can be very difficult to put these in order when um, they're all jumbled up. So I actually like to order, uh, put my data in order from least to greatest. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick. I'm actually going to move this down a little bit so I have more space. And I'm going to put these guys in order from least to greatest. So I have 10, 11, 13. Then I have 21, 25, 32, 36, 41, 45. Okay, so I put them in order from least to greatest. What this tells me is it tells me kind of how to set my stem and leaf plot up. Now, I'm going to make a very basic stem and leaf plot. So my key is going to be that these over here are going to be the tens, and over here is going to be the ones. So I'm going to have a very, very basic stem and leaf plot. So first of all, let's take it section by section. The first set of numbers I have are in the tens. So that means I'm going to put a one over here. And then on the other side, that represents our ones, I'm going to put zero. So that's going to be for 10, one for 11, and three for 13. So I'm going to go ahead and do my key. My key is going to be one line 10 or sorry, one line zero equals 10, okay? Uh, then my next set of numbers here are in the 20, so that means I need a two over here. And then I have 21 and 25. My next set of numbers are in the 30, so I need a three, 32, 36. And then my last set of numbers over here are in the 40s. Make this go down a little bit more. 41 and then 45. So there is my completed, I'll get rid of all these little notes on the side here, my completed stem and leaf plot. That's all you need to make a stem and leaf plot. You can label this if you want the stem. You can label this the leaf. Oops, leaf if I can spell. Uh, if you want, but you don't have to, okay? But you do absolutely must have a key telling people how to read your graph. Now, another thing that you need to know how to do is how to pull numbers off or how to pull information off of your graph. A stem and leaf plot is very much like a dot plot. It gives you every number in your data set. So because it gives you every number in your data set, you could find the median, the mode, the range, the interquartile range. You could find the mean. They could ask you to take these numbers and turn them 
into a box plot or a dot plot or a histogram. Like they can tell you to do a lot of things here uh, to these numbers because you know every single number in the data set. Now to pull some information off of here, first of all, make sure you check out the key. Our key is telling us that these numbers over here represents the ones place and that these numbers over here represents the tenths. So make sure that you realize that that key is telling us that that two line zero is not 20. It is actually 2.0, which is two as we know. So it's telling us that we have ones um, for our stems and then we have tenths for our leaves. So first of all, they wanna know the median. The median is the middle number. So I like to list out my data in order to find the median. I get really worried. Uh, some people can cross out numbers in a stem and leaf plot and find the median. And I get really uh, worried that I'm going to mess something up when I try to do that. And so I highly suggest that you two also, I have to squeeze that in right there, you two also uh, list out your numbers. It's a lot easier and you're, it's more... It's more of an assurance that you'll get the right answer. So to find the median, I'm gonna cross out my biggest and my smallest, working my way into the middle, and I'm left with two, so the median is two. The mode is the one that I see the most. I see two and then zero, 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 so that means that the 2.0 is going to be my mode, so two or 2.0, you can put that point zero on there if you want. The range is gonna be your biggest number minus your smallest number. So my biggest number is a 3.9. My smallest number is a one and two tenths. And so I'm gonna subtract those. And when I do, I get two and seven tenths. So I know my range. Again, they can ask you the mean. They could ask you to find the IQR, the interquartile range. They could ask you uh, questions about, you know, how many numbers are less than 2.0, well, there's three. How many numbers are greater than 1.3? Well, that would be two of them. So they can ask you questions about analyzing this plot just like any other one because you have all of the data there. Um, every number is represented. All right, guys, I hope that this helped clear up any confusion you had about making a stem and leaf plot or getting information off of a stem and leaf plot. I'll talk to you later. Bye.